Hey, today I want to talk about which iPad model you should consider buying as an architect. You're watching this because you're not sure which model is right for you, or you don't really understand all that technical jargon in the spec section. Having tried a few iPad models for work, from the cheapest option to the pro model, on um, what I would consider as everyday use, such as sketching, note-taking, and reading drawings on site visits, emailing, and taking photos. I'm not using it to perform complex, tasks like 3D modeling or video renderings or anything like that, uh, which are all possible on the iPad, but I'd rather do that on a desktop. So this is not a technical review. I think there are plenty of other tech channels that can do this better than I can. And I'm hoping that my everyday experience can help you with your purchasing decisions. So the current lineup of iPads are the iPad mini, iPad, iPad Air, and iPad Pro. I'm gonna give you a few pros and cons of each from a designer's perspective. I have to warn you though, if you are getting an iPad, then you're also buying an Apple Pencil. Without it, you are probably losing about half the productivity. This little stylus has really opened up a whole new world of possibilities, and I've never really used any other stylus just works so well. When combining this with the portability of the iPad, this combo is really hard to beat. Starting with the iPad mini, as much as I love the small form factor of just a 7.9 inch, I think it's just too small to be really useful for architects. Next is the regular iPad with a 10.9 inch display. This is probably the smallest model that I would consider buying because the display is just like large enough to both read a drawing and has adequate screen real estate to sketch on. It feels like drawing on actual uh, standard notebook. However, this model is only compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil, but despite being an older stylus, it surprisingly doesn't really affect your drawing experience. You just have to charge it via the USB port at the bottom of the iPad and not on the side like the new iPad. I have drawn on this many times before and can make just as pretty of a drawing as any other models. Most apps that you might need an iPad for will perform just fine. If you are working with a smaller budget, I think this model makes more sense. Now with the iPad Air 10.9 inch, I think this is probably the most what people will need it for. It hits all the categories plus the additional boost in performance for more complex tasks like 4K video editing and is compatible with the second generation Apple Pencil, which to be honest, I think it's just cooler looking with a magnetic charger on the side. Um, I think this iPad is strategically priced to bridge the entry level to the Pro model. So if you don't mind spending a couple hundred dollars more that has a nicer body, then get this. Okay, now to the iPad Pro. I honestly think this is kind of an overkill for most architects, but it is what I have. So there is the 10.9 inch model and the 12.9 inch model. The 10.9 inch is very similar to the iPad Air. I don't think you're going to notice any big performance difference between the two. The only thing that is nice about the Pro model is the ultra wide angle lens. I work in residential construction, this wide angle lens is super useful in tight spaces to document something. Once you've taken a photo on the iPad, you can annotate right on the spot with an Apple Pencil. Granted, some newer iPhones already have the ultra wide angle lens, so if you don't mind transferring the photo to the iPad, then you don't really need this extra lens on the Pro model. The size difference with the 10.9 inch Pro model and the iPad Air is negligible enough, so you really have to consider if it's worth the extra money to buy it. The reason why I have the 12.9 inch model is the screen size. Because I illustrate professionally, this physical size is most important to me than any other reason. I find it hard to draw on a smaller iPad screen for hours on straight, but that might not be the case for you. The smaller iPad size, except for the mini, is totally fine for regular drawing, which is also much more comfortable to hold in your hand and in the field, whereas the 12.9 inch can get a little heavy and clunky. The fact that it has an extra camera, performs better, doesn't add up to any real world difference in my everyday use. Granted, I could be using it for more graphic intense applications, but I don't really have any needs for those just yet. I know this isn't a very technical review, but hopefully I've provided some practical information to supplement your research. I think having an iPad has certainly improved my overall productivity. And in a future video, I'd love to talk about what apps I use as an architectural designer. Lastly, if you found this helpful and would like to support my work, 
you can find my beautiful pen and ink travel drawings on Etsy, which are available in black and white and a very unique gold for a variation. They're great to remind you of your favorite city, a monument, or a national park. Thanks for tuning in again.